is we have special pro kids when they come down. We have a lovely retired school teacher who comes in and gives a pretend lesson. He has them doing their times tables. And those of us who are a little older, you know, right about my age, would uh, remember sitting there doing times tables by route. Um, we also have, sometimes in the summertime, we have people come boards and the old basins for washing and it's just lovely to see the kids having a go with we've even got some very ancient soap which kind of lathers up and it was homemade soap so we can tell the children all about how that happened and how and they can washing gets done these days when most of us just chuck things into the washing let it do its thing and then hang things out. It's, it's really great fun. Um, and they really and really enjoy it. Um, now, I'd like to play you a piece of music now from a local band, actually, called Wild Geese. I just thought that um, you might enjoy this. Um, Wild Geese, it's... Um, this album was recorded at Mike's Place in Carterton and Sounds Unlimited in Corey in Wellington. Um, and it, the main vocals and acoustic guitar and keyboards are Brendan Connor, Michael Jew, Neil Francis, Mick Ludden, Paul Turner, uh, Brendan Connor and Lillian McLeod do the du duets, Bridget Connor, um, Siobhan Connor and Gillian McLeod do backing vocals. And Brendan did the um, cover design. And the the song that I'm going to play you is Song for a Neighbour. And I, th I thought in the lead up to Christmas, it's a good time to think about our neighbours. And um, just and at the moment, you know, when things are so uncertain and there's lots of, um, you know, we're just worried about whether we're going to be able to have a Christmas in the way that we normally do. So just checking in with your neighbour might be a nice thing to do. So here we have Song for a Neighbour by Wild Geese. <laughs> same way too and I have the time if you do hey sister how do you do mind if I just talk with you share with me your point of view I have the time if you do how often do we bother to spend time and those just around the bend and when we do where will it end Do 
all the cracks that we could mend. How often do we bother to spend time and all just around the bed? And when we do, where will it end? All the cracks that we could mend. That was Wild Geese and um, the uh, song for a neighbour. So just at, at the moment, as I said, it's good, really good to check in with your neighbours, making sure they're OK and making sure that they um, that everything's all right with them pre-Christmas. It's um, in, um, in the museum, we have... A, a model village, basically. It's a model of the main street, and it's um, a model of Greytown, and um, it was developed to mark the centenary of the end of World War One, showing the township as it stood on the return of the soldiers in 1918. It was entitled Greytown, 38 stories, 38 sections, and the it, all around the walls are stories about each of the buildings. And one of the things that we really kind of specialise in cobblestones is showing the buildings and showing what it would have been like and the way people lived their lives then and giving visitors and just a taste of what it might have been like and the kind of... Um, the kind of challenges and difficulties that the settlers faced. And they, I have to say that I really admire the settlers because sometimes we, um, we do, we do uh, open days at, at Cobblestones and there's a whole gang of us get dressed up in replica Victorian costumes, which is a delight to do and great fun and also makes me realise with when I'm wearing my underskirt made out of 12 yards of material um, plus a, a skirt over the top which is another uh, 7 yards of material um, just how how much how challenging it is to do things I mean you certainly can't run in that kind of stuff um, and and people did a lot of, you know, they, they did a lot of work. And even, you know, doing the washing was a, a major, major exercise. That's why Mondays was wash day for everybody. So um, when we look back at uh, the hundred, uh, 50 years of history, it's put together by volunteers. And starting with the Greytown JC's chapter in the 1970s, um, the friends of Cobblestones these days are the people who really keep the museum going. They're fantastic. They come in every couple of weeks on a Saturday morning and they keep the grass cut and tidied. They come in and the grounds are all, always look beautiful. And... Um, Recently, we got a, a, a grant from um, one of the, I think it was Eastern and Central, who helped us put in irrigation and a well throughout the grounds. And um, without grants, monies like that, we'd find it very hard to keep the museum going because we want to keep the cost of entry as low as possible. Um, from... Generous grants from South Wairarapa District Council, Masterton District Council, Carterton District Council and lots of other agencies as well as bequests and donations. So this is, um, as we come up to Christmas, this is a really good opportunity for us to acknowledge all the different organisations who keep us going by give, giving us grants. And as I said, the latest one is from the um, community, Great Town Community Board so we can run a couple of music events which will be great fun. I do know that the first uh, music event is going to be 
Laura Collins and the Back Porch Band. And I know they've been out here before and they're always really good value. Um, as also in the run up to Christmas, when we think about the ways that people in the um, in the uh, late 19th century celebrated Christmas, they, um, the uh, British settlers, obviously the ones who came out here from the Small Farms Association, which uh, was the organisation that set up Great Anne, they would have you know, try to celebrate Christmas in a traditional English way. And, of course, it was um, Christmas trees had been introduced to the UK, primarily by uh, Prince Albert, Queen Victoria's consort, and they would have brought out, um, they would have had small Christmas trees, probably. Uh, believe it or not, popcorn was very popular in Vic later Victorian times. And it, something that used to be decorating the Christmas trees would be strings of popcorn. So, and they would even um, um, dye it different colours, which you can do with a bit of difficulty, I have to admit, since I tried to do it. And lots and lots of handmade Christmas decorations and handmade toys. Um, we... We often try to um, put up a Christmas tree in cobblestones, but what we've decided to do this year is we'll keep it until next midwinter Christmas because the poor trees don't um, survive very well because it does get a bit hot in the church. But you can come and look at um, a Harvest Festival which we have a little video that you play as just before you go into the church. There's a video that you can watch that shows you what a harvest festival would have been like. So, talking about our neighbours and keeping an eye out for, for them in harder times, um, I know that it's um, really tough at the moment for our neighbours further up North Ireland in Auckland. They've been doing some hard yards and although they've got some freedoms now and I believe they're even going to be able to go to the hairdresser again uh, which is, is really good. I've been speaking to some of my friends who live up in Auckland and also our kids and, and they have been having a hard time. It has been um, you know, quite difficult for them because they're usually quite a sociable bunch and as summer starts they like to get out and about a lot more. So I just want to acknowledge them for doing the tough times for us and trying to keep this blasted virus um, ring-fenced, as it were. So um, I thought I would play a song that I said I was going to play last time, like two weeks ago, um, called Waitamata. And this is a song that was written by my husband, Niels Gedge, because um, he grew up in Auckland for part of his life, um, went to university there and worked there for a number of years, um, for about 17 or 18 years. And he has um, a real... He really loves the, the harbour, the Waitamata, which is really the heart of Auckland. So this song is called Waitamata, and... I'm just about to play it now. Here you go. The sun is setting west of the harbour. Laying sheets of gold on the sea. Lone bird cries above the still water. Tracing circles in my memory. Today's the day that I could walk on water. Life in the mirror of the sea. 
day I'd say that I could walk on water This is the place I'd rather be Out to the east The islands wait forever Hang a toto Sleeps on the way The dark volcano Heaves out a shoulder This is the place I'll spend my day And you lay sleeping In the car While I Measure distances From shore to shore And you lay sleeping In the car Distances from shore to shore. was Waitamata by Niels Gedge and yes he is a good New Zealand lad with a name like Niels he as you might guess he has some Scandinavian heritage as well as some um, Scottish and and English heritage like a lot of New Zealanders a real mixture it's great and um, Waitamata or sparkling water which is a tribute to our friends and neighbours in Auckland Well, that's about it for my programme today. Um, My name is Jeanette Wallace-Gedge and I'm one of the trustees of Cobblestones Museum and it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Now, I have heard that they may have been a little uh, bit of robot speak at the start of the programme today. Um, Just a, a slight technical thing that hopefully... Uh, you haven't rushed out and had your ears tested because it was a little techy thing that wasn't quite right. But um, we've hopefully got it sorted out for the rest of the programme. And I'll be back in a couple of weeks' time, just before Christmas, telling you more about Cobblestones Museum. Thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>